Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Men Allowed. Myself, Dave Sheen, high performance consultant and dedicated for over 25 years now to educating, motivating and inspiring people just like you in getting control of your life, especially the mind, body, health area of your life, so that you can feel the best you can be, you can be the best you can be, you, know, you can live the best life experience you can have and that you desire, because that's what we all want, you know. And look, unfortunately, in the last year and a half especially, mental health has been hit hard by people, for people across the world. And this is a big reason why I set up Men Allowed, because men in particular don't communicate as well as they should. They don't let their emotions show as much as they should. They hide their emotions down deep inside because you're supposed to be like an alpha male and showing emotions is weak. And through Men Allowed, I want to give you a platform where you can share your feelings, you can communicate better. And that's why I encourage you to share your stories, send them in to me or come on with me and let's chat through them and help each other to lead happier lives. Because again, happiness is all that matters. And when you're in a dark place, it's very hard to be happy. So it's important to take certain steps along the way to achieve things and get out of the hole and get to where you want to be. So, you know, in previous episodes, I've given you tips and strategies to help with your mental health. I've had people on where we've shared their story and hopefully that has inspired you. Um, every, every show is dedicated to hopefully making a positive impact on you and hopefully making a positive impact on your mental health because it's an area that we have to start tackling. We have to tackle mental health because mental health is being bombarded. It always has been an issue. It's always been swept under the carpet. It's never got the right you know, attention, never got the right funding, doesn't matter where you are in the world. It needs to be addressed much more because you know we are emotional beings, our mindsets are everything. Like I said, the mind is a control tower and it's really, really important that we tackle men the many mental health issues that are out there. They're becoming more and more rampant. It's happening with more and more younger people. And this is the scariest thing. That before where children or young adults never really had any huge issues or challenges or problems, now it's increasing at a rapid rate. And this past 15, 16 months hasn't exactly helped either in this con constant incessant bombardment and negativity and fear mongering, which the media has put, has has uh, imposed basically upon those who are unfortunately listened to it all the time. And if you have to be one of those people, my biggest tip to you is to stop watching the news, stop listening to the news, stop reading it in the papers. You could do nothing better for your mental health than just to do that one thing, okay? So make sure, again, you do that. Really, really important, all right? On this particular episode, um, I'm going to speak to you a little bit about five little messages that I'm going to give you, okay? Every every day I do, one Monday to Friday, I do a morning motivation across my social media. So just little message to give you a bit of a spark, give you a bit of motivation to go into the day and take things on and start working on your goals and feeling better and self-esteem and self-image and so on. So in this particular episode of Men Allowed, what I want to do, I wanted to show last week's um, messages and talk through them and hopefully they can have a positive impact on you. Now, what's going to come next is a little video that I create each Saturday that compiles those five messages from Monday to Friday and the music and so on. So right now, look at this video, short video, it's only 15 seconds with the five messages and then I'll speak about each message individually. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that. five messages I hope even just seeing that alone seeing those five messages without explanation has helped you and given you a bit of a different perspective maybe giving you a bit of motivation giving you a bit of inspiration to improve your life because each time I do morning motivation it is with the sole purpose of having a positive impact in your life to give you that spark to give you that nudge to keep pushing you on towards what you want out of life because again you live once and also again for any of you guys who are out there suffering any bit suffering with any kind of mental health issues and finding life really tough, you know, these tiny little messages can be that spark. And I encourage you to, you know, whether it be my material, or other people's material, you know, focus on consuming positive material. You know, what you consume has a huge impact on your mind. Your mind's a control tower. So who you listen to and what you listen to impacts how your mind is, which impacts what thoughts you have, what feelings you get from those thoughts and how you react to those thoughts. So it's really important that, you know, you 
consume predominantly positive mindset information because then you will prime your mind to get you out of the dark place or to move towards your goals, whatever it may be. But it's important for mental health. Like I, I stopped consuming TV or radio or papers like that about 15 years ago. Now I've stopped completely. If I consume anything now, I'm deciding what it is. And it will always serve me and it'll always enrich me. Just like the people, I don't engage with people or expose myself to people who won't have a positive impact on me. People who are negative, people who are constantly living a life where they play the blame game and make excuses, I have no interest in them. So I don't expose myself to their bad energy. I expose myself to people who give off good energy. And this is something you've control over and you've power over. So make sure you, you know, use that power that you do have. You know, you don't have to be exposing yourself to these people because it's very hard to be around somebody who's negative and not feel your energy dropping. It's it's inevitable for it to happen. It takes a very strong minded person to be able to counteract that. So first message on the video, which you saw was life is too short to be anything but happy. Life is too short to be anything but happy. And look, the bottom line is time is ticking. Time is our most valuable resource. OK, it's the most valuable, the most precious. Yet we waste it. Most people are wasting the precious time they have every single day, week, month, year, decade. And then what happens? You're left with lots of regrets. You have no idea how much time you're going to get. You could get 20 years, 50 years, 84 years, 120 years. Like, you know, it's something we have no idea about. Your lifestyle, the way you live your life, the way your mind works, your psychology will have a big impact on, you know, how long you will live. And most importantly, you know, how how good the quality of your life will be, which is more important than anything. But also you could just get hit by a bus tomorrow. You could get hit by a drunk driver. Anything is possible. You could get an illness that could wipe you out fast. This is why I stress to people about, you know, live in fear of regret. Live in fear of regret. Every single day you should be living a life where you're grateful that you have another opportunity to live life fully and you're grateful for another opportunity to take action towards your goals, take action towards increasing your happiness, you know, and just having the making that vision you have for your life become a reality because it can be. And life is too short to be eating more happy. So it's important for you to do things that make you happy. Be around people who make you happy. Do the activities that make you happy. Because when you're happy within yourself, you know, life is very different than when you're not happy within yourself. This is why I stress so much about taking action to improve your self-esteem, your self-image, your confidence, the work in yourself, self-growth personal development, these areas are so important for every single person. I've worked on myself intensively for over 25 years now. And anyone knows my story. I had a very bad time growing up, you know, just from about seven, eight years of age, right up to 17. And I don't mean in terms of terrible things happening to me, but I mean, in my mind, in my mind, it was in a very bad place. I didn't want to be here. I wanted to end it, tried to end it a few times. That's, that was dark. But from working in myself, I now would be the total flip. I have very high self-confidence, self-esteem, self-image. I, I love my own company. I love myself. I truly do love myself. And this is, the, this is where everyone needs to get to. This is where everyone can get to. But you have to have a different perspective in life. You have to have a perspective where you do fear regret. You have to have a perspective where you truly want to live life fully. You, know, you don't let other people impact your life. You don't let other people's opinions impact you. You pay no attention to it. You live the life that you want to live. So life is too short to be anything but happy. Next message. Look in the mirror. That's your competition. Look in the mirror. That's your competition. Okay, so in life, again, society conditioning, which is to, you'll hear me say this a lot across all the shows, okay, but society conditioning makes us compete against each other. It's decisive or divisive, sorry. There's a lot of tactics like that in the world in terms of the whole conveyor belt system that we're put through that creates us into literally like clones of each other, okay? But there's a huge device from this in it then as well, where we compete against you. We're looking at one person thinking, oh, I want to be like that person. Now, that can be inspiring. It can be used in a positive way for sure, and it's powerful when it is, but for most people, it is not. You know, it's comparison. And most people are using comparison in the wrong way. And the simple thing is, a simple fact, comparison is a thief of joy. Comparison is a thief of joy. So if you're always comparing yourself to others who you see as higher, you won't feel good within yourself. You won't be present in where you are right now. You won't be grateful for what you have. You will feel bad about not being where that person is. And this is for the vast majority of people. There are some people who get inspired by other people and by other people's actions and 
you know, what they do. It's like a child looking at, let's say, Lionel Messi as a footballer and wanting to be him and being inspired to be the best they can be in practice every day and spend a couple hours after practice, do more practice and so on and so on. That's great. That's powerful. That's where you use it beneficially. But for the vast majority of people, when they compare, they actually feel worse because they're reflecting on where their life is, where that person's life is, and feeling they're a waste of space. They haven't done anything with their lives. They're not fulfilled. They're not happy. So this is why you need to realize that you are your competition. Same as that child. While they might be getting a bit inspired by a professional footballer that they adore, the person who they're actually competing against is the person who looks back at them from the mirror. And every single day you look in that mirror, that is the person you're competing against. So you need to focus on being better than you were yesterday. Every week, every day be better than the day before, every week be better than the week before. And in life in general, throughout the journey, aim to be continuously better and better and better. And if you fall off the wagon, get back on again. Your competition is that person in the mirror. This way you can't make excuses. This way you shouldn't ever play the blame game because it's that person looking in the mirror is your competition. And it's that person looking back at you from the mirror that you need to shake up, kick in the ass and get into action, get into gear to do what needs to be done. Because that's your competition. Be the best you that you can be. Stop comparing to other people. Be the best you that you can be. Whatever it is you want out of life, be the best of it. The best in terms of what you can do. And if that's the best in the world, fantastic. It's like anyone who becomes the best in the world at anything, they had an attitude throughout their life that they were going to be the best them that they could be. They may have got a little bit inspired by people who were who had gone before them, who were the best, but they predominantly were focused on being the best that they could be because that's all you can do. It's the only thing you can control. You can control being the best you that you can be. Like me and what I put out there and all the information I put out there and content and videos and podcasts and all that. I'm My goal and mission in life is to have a positive impact on millions around the world. I want to I want to be the best me that I can be. Now, if I'm not renowned after I pass as the best podcaster, for instance, in the world, that doesn't mean my life wasn't a su success. If I am making people's lives improve, that to me is success because I'm being better all the time. I'm evolving all the time. Like I said, since... I was 17 for the last 25 years or more, I've evolved better, 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 because I'm living a life consciously with that goal in, in hand. So I'm competing against me. Every day I'm trying to be better than I was yesterday. And this is what you have to do. Next message. What will, what will be in happiness to you? You need to get very clear on what happiness is, you know, to you. As I said earlier with the first message, society creates this impression of what happiness should be. OK, when your reality is, that may not be your idea of happiness. This is why you have to break free of societal conditioning. This is why we have to tune into ourselves, become very self-aware. Being self-aware is really, really important. You, know, you need to become very self-aware of what it is you want out of life. Become very self-aware of what happiness means to you, what success means to you, and what will make you lead a fulfilling life. Because only you know that. You're the only person that knows. You need to get very tuned into it, get very clear on it. Okay, so what does happiness mean to you? Like I live my life very in tune with what happiness means to me. I'm very clear on what it is, what it needs to be. I'm very in tune with my values and beliefs. And it's important that you do tune into them and you live a life that's in tune with them and in line with them because otherwise you can't be happy. You must be in line with your values and your beliefs and your true essence of you. We're all different, we're all unique. It's important that you are you, the true you. Embrace your uniqueness, be you and lead that life and lead a life to bring you happiness. So what does happiness mean to you? If you've never properly thought about it, take just two minutes right now to think about it and note down a couple of things that would signify happiness to you. And then what you need to do is you need to start working towards that. You start working towards what actions can you take to move you closer to that level of happiness? So what happiness means to you? What do you need to do to make that a reality for you? Because again, the power is with you. You can do it. The power is with you. So make sure you can your you know, taking responsibility for your life because you're the only person who can, okay? Right, so what will happen? What will mean happiness to you? Next message. The light only increases if you move towards it. The light only increases if you move towards it. Now let's go back to the people who bitch and moan all the time, who complain, who make excuses, who blame other people all the time. Do their lives improve? It's like the lotto mentality. You know, people just take a punt, on something like the lotto and hope that it will change your life forever. Hope that they're going to win and then their lives will change forever. They're not doing anything themselves to make life better. They're waiting for something else to do it. So if you're sitting on your ass, staying where you are and just hoping and wishing that things will change, it ain't going to get any more light. No more light's going to come into your life. 
It's like the secret, the book, the secret, the movie, the secret. While they were very inspiring in some ways, very motivating and very factually correct, they also left out a very important part, which was actions, what counts. You don't just put out what you want in life. You don't just, you know, law of attraction, put it out there, keep putting out that intention, and then it comes back. If you're not taking the necessary action while putting out that intention, it's not going to come back to you. So you need to be taking action. You need to move towards it. So like the professional footballer, or if you want to be an author, if you just simply want to lose a few pounds, you have to take action towards that end goal. And as you're moving towards it, the light will increase. This is why, like I say to people, when they're trying to get in better shape or improve their health, as you start to take positive action, as you're take, taking positive steps, you will start to feel better. You will start to look better. You will start to like yourself a bit more. And once you do that, and that's the chinks of light, you will gain momentum, you will accelerate your efforts, and the light will come faster and faster and faster until you get there. This is the thing. The light only increases if you move towards it. It doesn't move if you sit in your arse. You have to move towards it. Whatever you want out of life, you have to move towards it. You have to take action. Okay? It's like with knowledge. Knowledge is in power. It's the implementation of knowledge that's power. It's knowing stuff. There's loads of people who know lots. There's loads of people who know lots about exercise and nutrition and hydration and sleep and all these things. But if they're not putting it into practice, they're not implementing it, their lives won't improve. Is this you? Same with you getting your job, your relationships, your financial situation. Are you doing things that will improve it? Are you doing things that will bring more light into your life, more happiness into your life? Because if you're not, how do you expect it to change? It's not going to change. So the light only increases if you move towards it. And the final message, sometimes going back in time is a powerful reminder. Sometimes going back in time is a powerful reminder. So there's two kind of angles to this. Sometimes we forget where we came from. We forget all that we achieved, you know, the mountains we climbed along the way. And this again is where society condition comes in a lot. We always feel we need more. And this is why I stress you have to break free of this societal conditioning. You have to break free of it because it's, it makes you aim for an unattainable goal. You can't reach what it's trying to get you to reach for. This is where most of society is unhappy and unfulfilled and full of regret all the time. Because most are not acknowledging and realizing that they've done so much in their life and they've achieved so much and they have so much to be grateful for. Because you can be actually moving in the right direction, but because you're seeing of all the things that you should have done, you perceive and you forget where you came from, you feel bad about where you are right now. When the reality is you've come so, so far, you've overcome so many obstacles, you should be so, so proud of yourself. And looking at where you were to where you are today should give you a massive boost and make you feel so much better and motivate you to go on even further. You know, like I've, very, I've heard various interviews with different sports stars who, you know, to kind of keep themselves grounded, have often gone back to where they're from, gone back to even the schools, the playgrounds, the areas that we're from, and that serves as a reminder to them, this is where I came from. And look where I am now. Look at the status, the credibility, the fame, the money, the material things, the houses, all that kind of stuff that I have. Look where I've come from. That's a reminder. Also, again, if you, for instance, had a mad nervous breakdown or you had addictions before and you came through them, came out the other side, and now you're, you're kind of feeling angsty about what you're making the most of your life, look back what you came through. Look where you could be right now if you didn't give up those addictions, if you didn't overcome those obstacles, you know, if you had committed suicide, where would you be? But look where you are right now. So sometimes we need to go back. We need to go back in time sometimes to remind ourselves of it, you know, because it's important that we do. It's important that we do sometimes because we often forget. You know, we often forget where we came from. You know, and we just get caught up in wanting more all the time. And it's a natural human instinct, but it's especially evident because of, again, societal conditioning of this much wants more, always wanting more. And there's nothing wrong with wanting more, want to achieve more, experience more. That's fine. I'm all for that. But we have to remind ourselves sometimes of where we, where we came from and who we are and what we've achieved and what we've experienced and the mountains that we've climbed. You know, what mountains have you climbed in your life? What have you got to be proud of? I'm sure there's loads. I'm sure there's loads you've got to be proud of. So sometimes going back in time is a powerful reminder, okay? So these messages again, and we just go through them again. Life is too short to be anything but happy. Look in the mirror, that's your competition. What will happiness mean to you? The light only increases if you move towards it. And sometimes going back in time is a powerful 
reminder. I hope you got something from each of these messages. There might be one that struck at a particular chord with you. Typically, that is what happens for people. Um, it's really important that you just focus on being the best you that you can be. That's the bottom line from all these kind of messages and all the messages I put out there. Be the best you that you can be. Do not compare yourself to other people. Compete against yourself, that person looked back to you in the mirror. And remember, you live once, live fully. Time is a resource that is not unlimited. And you have no idea how much you've left. You have no idea how much you're going to get. So live fully. And if you're in a dark place, take that first step to moving towards the light. Remember, you have to move towards the light. And it doesn't matter how dark a place you might be in. You can do it. And I'm here to help you do it. And if I can be of help, you want to chat, you want to message anything, I'm only a message away. So shoot me a message and let's chat things out. I'm here to help in any way I can. Let me help you to see that little bit of light and let's increase that light all the time. You know, we're all in different phases of the journey through life. We're all in different phases of the journey where some of us are going through really challenging times. Others, we're going through really good times. But the one sure thing about life is you will have both challenging times and wonderful times. It just depends on your mentality, how much of each you get and also how you react to each one. Okay, so I hope this was a beneficial episode of Men Aloud for you. Remember, keep contacting me, send me a message, contact the show, send a message that pass on to me, share your stories if you'd like to be on the show, if you want to be anonymous, if you want to send a written story, anything in all you feel will help other people. Again, I want this to be a platform and a show that will help, help men, not just around Ireland, but all over the world to feel better within them, in themselves, to be able to emotionally be more open and to communicate better. Because there's nothing worse than keeping things inside. If you keep things buried inside, it will eat at you like a disease. It will be like a poison and it will go rampant and it will affect your mind, it will affect your body, it will affect everything. Because negative emotions, negative energy are one of the main reasons for disease. You don't hear these things, but that's the fact. So if you let that rot inside you, it's going to literally rot your body and rot your mind. So. I want you to be open, contact me confidentially. I, you know, I respect confidentiality always. Shoot me a message, let me know how things are, how I can help. If you want to chat things through, I'm here for you. And men allow this here for you as well. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that episode. Keep doing your best. Remember today be better than yesterday. This week be better than last week. Keep taking steps forward. Let's get more and more light into our lives. Mm -hmm.